Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinzen here and welcome to tutorial number 25. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to float and clear two boxes. So one to the left and one to the right. We often use float and clear to create columns and stuff like that. And you know, basically, like I said in the previous tutorial, float and clear can be used for many things. Uh, so this is uh, what we ended the last tutorial off with. And uh, you can see that we used float to float an image um, into the corner of some text. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just clear all of that code out of my CSS. I'm also going to clear all of that code out of my uh, body. And uh, let's take a look at float and clear part two, right? So like I said, I wanna create a, a box to the left and then a box to the right. So let's create a div and I'm gonna give this div a class of box, box one. And then I'm also going to copy that div and move it over, <laughs> move over to a new line and call that one box two. So we'll say that box one is the left side and we'll say that box two is the right side. Save this now, come back over the browser, hit refresh. And you can see we've got our left side and we've got our right side, but uh, right now they're not displaying on the left and the right. Um, instead, they're displaying one above the other. So let's give this a little bit of styling. I'm gonna select box one by its class, and uh, I'm gonna give it a border of four pixels, solid red. I'm also gonna give it a height of 400 pixels, and we can do the same thing for box two. So let me copy and paste that down here. Box two, save, come back here, hit refresh, uh, and let's change that border to blue just so we can see what's going on a little bit more clearly. So like I've told you guys many times in the past, divs always extend to take up the full width of uh, the browser. That is until you float them, right? So let's float left and for the other one, let's float that right, so right. Um, and once you float a div like this, uh, it loses its uh, width. So let's come back here and hit refresh. And now you can see we've got our left side on the left and we've got our right side on the right and the width has become auto. Uh, so basically it's made itself as wide as the content inside of the div is. Right, and it's the same thing on this side here as well. Uh, so basically, uh, if you want these divs to take up 50% and 50%, you could come back here and give this a width of 50%. And then you go over to the next one and give that a width of 50%. Save this and hit refresh. And now you can see we've got a little bit of a problem because they're not displaying next to each other anymore. We don't have our left side on the left and our right side on the right. And that is a bit of a problem. But the reason why that came across is because uh, if I inspect that in Firebug and I hover over uh, this element, you can see that box one uh, has a border of four pixels on the left. It's also got a border of four pixels on the right. And then it's got its width over here um, in the actual element. So what that means is our element is 50% width, which in this case happens to be 712 pixels, plus four on the left, plus four on the right. So it basically makes this element more than 50% of the width. And then it also makes this element more than 50% of the width. Uh, so each one of them is more than 50%. Now they're too big to fit next to each other, if that makes sense. You can, you can see that overlapping happen just over there, right? They're too big to fit next to each other. So the right side drops and displays below the left and we don't want that. So a simple solution might be to just make that a little bit smaller, 49%, and then make that one a little bit smaller as well. Uh, come back here, refresh. And now we've got our left side on the, our left side on the left and our right side on the right, but we don't know how big this spacing is gonna be. Uh, I mean, if I, 
resize the browser, that spacing could get bigger or smaller depending on, on what the width of the browser is. So that sometimes is not really the best solution. Let's go back here, make the box uh, one 50% and box two 50% again. Uh, and another way to get rid of something like this is to just not use borders. So let's make those both zero pixels or we could just remove the line either way, all right? And uh, come back here, refresh. And now we've got both of these to the left and to the right, and there's actually no spacing between those. So, um, okay, one way I could do this <laughs> is inspect element, and uh, you can see left side or box one goes all the way to uh, touching the right hand side of the box, and then the right hand side also touches the left hand side of the box. So there's no spacing between the two of these. Uh, and an easier way to see that might be to just add a background of red to box one and a background of blue to box two, right? So let's come back and hit refresh. Uh, these boxes are displayed pushed up against each other. Uh, sometimes you might want to have a little bit of spacing over here and you might want to determine how big that spacing is. So in this case, let's say I wanted 30 pixels between these two boxes. Well, again, if I come back over to box one and I give this a margin right of uh, 30 pixels, come back here, I'll save this and come back over the browser and hit refresh, boom. <laughs> box two is now back below uh, box one instead of next to each other. Uh, and the reason for that, again, inspect element, you can see that box one now has a margin on the right of 30 pixels. So again, it's bigger than 50%. It's bigger than the width that you were um, trying to allow it to be, and therefore they don't fit next to each other anymore. So what I'm trying to say here is borders and margins and paddings contribute to the overall width of your element. And if you add borders and margins and paddings, um, you might have this problem where when you're trying to float things to the left and to the right, they don't fit and then they drop down below each other. Uh, so you need to work a way around that. And uh, I find one of the solutions in doing that is to not add borders or mar margins or paddings or anything to the parent elements, but rather uh, to uh, create a child element within the div. So in this case, uh, let's go over to box one. Uh, we'll indent these uh, little bits of text and I'm gonna place them within another div. And we'll give that a class of inner box, right? Um, so let's copy and paste that text into there and get rid of uh, that spacing. And we can do the same thing with the right hand side. Uh, and uh, now if I come back here, refresh, we've got these two next to each other, but um, like I said, I wanted to have 30 pixels of spacing between these two. So to do that, um, Let's get rid of the background colors and the borders. And we'll do the same with number two. And then we can select the children inside of these elements. So let's go box one and then we'll select the inner box inside of box one. So in, uh, what now what we're doing is instead of selecting this element, we're selecting this element. Uh, I've spoken about child classes before, so that's exactly what happens here, or child selectors. And let's give that a background of red. And we'll do the same for box two. Box two's inner box, we'll make that, uh, we'll have that with a background of uh, blue. And now they're displaying next to each other. They've lost their height. Reason why is because the height was given to the parent and the parent now longer, no longer has a background color. So uh, you might wanna take that height out and put that down here as well, if you're expecting to have the height. Um, and then, uh, well, let's just save and refresh. All right, so now that they've got their heights back, uh, but I want that spacing here. So now 
in a box of box one can have a margin right of 30 pixels. And that's gonna give it that little bit of space. Uh, what that does mean is that box one is now smaller than box two. So you might wanna actually give this a margin right of 15 pixels and then copy that down to the next one and give that a margin left of uh, 15 pixels and that'll keep them exactly the same size with that spacing in the middle so you could do it that way there are other ways you could uh, take care of this as well um, and uh, yeah there's many different ways to get ar get around this problem right uh, so it just depends on how you want to do things and what the ultimate uh, goal or look for you is gonna be uh, but like I said, there are many uses for this because sometimes you might want to have a paragraph of text over here and then an image to the right, or you might want to have an image to the left and some paragraph of text to the right. So it all depends on, on what it is you're trying to do. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, we will be taking a look at more examples of this in the future. Uh, they won't be specifically dedicated to Float and Clear, but hopefully uh, we'll use a practical example somewhere and uh, you'll get to see exactly how this all works. I just want to send a shout out to my sponsors at Dev Mountain. They run a coding bootcamp with courses on iOS development, UX design and web development and they'll teach you everything you need to know to get a job within this field and they'll do it within 12 weeks. So check out their website, the link is in the description below and if you do contact them, make sure to tell them that I sent you. Special thanks to the guys whose names are on screen now. These guys contribute $5 or more on Patreon and I really appreciate that. Uh, while you're still here, there are a few other things that you can do to help out. So follow me on social media and check out some more of my content and I'll see you guys next time.